Namaste and welcome to today's episode. We all know about inflammation, we all talk about immunity and we all talk about digestive health. And we know if these three works together, you would be healthy. And if something goes wrong in somewhere in either of these three, you'll have a problem. And today we'll talk something about digestive health and inflammation and immunity. Now, what is the function of our immune system? Our immune system function is to identify what is you and what is not you. When I say what is you and what is not you means the immune system, when you take or you eat food or you come in exposure to anything and your immune system is like a vigilant police moving inside your body, they come in contact with uh, this foreign object, it sends it whether the foreign object is a friend or an enemy. If it's a friend, it will not do anything, it will let go of it. If it's an enemy, it will try and protect you. How, how will it protect you? By causing inflammation, by moving white blood cells, which is your uh, fighting force, and combat that by creating some inflammation in the body, fixing it and going back. Now, 90% of our immune system is around our digestive system, our digestive tract. So that means if the immune system is concentrated there, the chances of inflammation would be very, very high in this area or through this area. And 90% of the time, our immune system uh, surveys and does nothing. It surveys and does nothing. So it does not react to what is happening in and around it. Now, what happens is when you're exposed to a very, very long time of uh, stress, toxic environment or food which is not right for you or your body is not accepting that food, that's where the immune system gets compromised. Now, when the immune system gets compromised, what does it do? It causes some inflammation. So there is an inflammation which happens when there is a threat and there is an inflammation which happens when there is a chronic issues. So a normal inflammation is good for your body because that's how the body repairs and rejuvenates itself. When it's chronic, that's where the problem uh, starts. Now, uh, what does body does? Body communicate to have a balance between inflammation and healing. So if you have a problem, the body will inflame itself and the body will heal itself and the inflammation will go down. Now, how does our immune system works? Immune system works three ways. So if the immune system is just right, okay, it is not reacting to anything, there is no problem, the immune system will say it's a self-knowledge, it is adapting to your new environment, it is understanding the new food that you're eating and saying, okay, this is normal. The immune system does not react. Now, if the immune system starts to get low, it is not reacting to what you are getting exposed to in terms of food, in terms of stress, in terms of toxin, that's where the disease like cancer can happen. So that means your immune system has uh, has gone down. Okay, And if your immune system starts to overreact, okay, that means whether you're eating same food which you were eating earlier and you are uh, feeling good, now you're reacting to it, that means your immune system has gone rot. It, is, it has turned on its uh, meter. Now, when that happens, that you have what we call autoimmunity. So it's all about regulation of your immune system. And the majority of immune system, as we discussed, is in your digestive system. So if you are able to regulate your digestive system, you'll be able to regulate your immune system, hence reducing an inflammation. And we all know how inflammation is linked to uh, majority of so-called disease in the modern world. <laughs> now, there are four types of immune responses to whatever happens. One is an innate response. Okay, uh, This is your first line of defense. So you eat certain food, uh, you have an immediate allergic reaction to it because the body is not accepting to it. Then there is an adaptive immune system which takes a clue from toxins, which takes a clue from the food that you're eating and it adapts to the new threat or the new environment. Uh, then there is an immune inflammatory response which happens uh, that the body causes inflammation and the immune system comes and fix it. So your neutrophils, lymphocytes, basinophils, eosinophils, these are all part of these uh, innate and adaptive and your immune inflammatory system. And the fourth one is the regulatory system, which regulates how your system works, how your body reacts. So this is a cyclic way in which an immune system works. So if you want to fix your immunity and inflammation, you have to look at your digestive system, how you can improve uh, that. Now, what are the causes for digestive inflammation? Uh, inflammation caused by a digestive tract. First is genetics. So there are a lot of people who, who are born with certain genes where they are, uh, they, are they cannot uh, eat certain kinds of food. Certain people, like 1% of population is uh, genetically prone to a celiac. So they can't eat gluten or they can't take dairy as a 
uh, product. So there you'll have digestive inflammation if you take those foods. Then there is a second concept which is known as translocation of bacteria. Now translocation of bacteria means your gut bacteria is moving from one location to another location. It is not that it's, whether it is a good bacteria or bad bacteria, it's just that the bacteria is finding more food in certain locations where it should not be finding it and we have certain conditions known as SIBO where uh, gut bacteria moves from large intestine to small intestine causing a lot of severe bloating, cramping, constipation or diarrhea depending upon whether it is a methane gas they are releasing or hydrogen gas they are releasing. Third is there is a dysbiosis. When I say dysbiosis means the food or your balance uh, of uh, bacteria, parasites, uh, fungal infection, there is some imparity means you are having more of bad versus more of good. Okay, so there is an imbalance and which is called dysbiosis and which can also lead to digestive inflammation. Then obviously the diet becomes uh, the number one reason. The more processed you are eating, the more packed you are eating, the more convenience food you are eating, you are weakening your digestive system because you are not involving all the digestive enzyme, all the juices, all the entire digestive tract uh, process in uh, assimilating, digesting and eliminating that food. And hence your bacteria, if they are not exposed to variety, uh, of food on a regular basis, they die off. It's like they, they start to extinct from your body. And if you have that and all of a sudden you try and eat something which is you have not been exposed to or your bacteria are not available for it, you have what we call as a inflammation or an allergy uh, due to certain foods. And the last one is if you have a leaky gut, means your gut uh, lining has been compromised. So what should have stayed inside is moved out. And what should have moved out might have stayed in for a longer time causing a lot of inflammation in the body. So this is how our digestive system inflammation uh, happens. Now what can we do about it? Uh, that's the biggest question that people ask. Okay? And a lot of people say, how do I heal my gut? So you have to remember there is no one fixed protocol for healing a gut. Everybody has to go through a different process depending upon where you are right now. So some people might have a problem only with uh, eating crap food. So if you just fix that, you might heal your gut. Some people would have a exposure to toxins. Okay. Some people would have a mercury exposure. So you need to fix that. Then you might have to feel uh, fix your gut. Some people would have a very highly compromised gut. So you need to start working towards it. But certain tips that can help you reduce this digestive inflammation, increase your immunity, and and hence uh, have a state of so-called wellness versus a state of illness. Now, first thing is you need to ensure whenever you're eating food, you are in a rest and a relaxed mode. You should not eat while you're running, rushing, or you are in a stressed state. If you're stressed, avoid eating it. Give your digestive system a break. Okay. Second, uh, try an elimination diet. An elimination diet is where for a certain period of time, you eliminate certain food that your body is not uh, uh, habitual to or not accepting right now. Heal the gut reintroduce this food, observe your reaction, uh, do it for three times. If this does not happen, that means that food is not meant for you. Maybe because the way it has been grown, the way it has been processed, the way it has been brought and the way your body is accepting it. Okay. Third thing you have to look at is start eating a rainbow. When I say rainbow, you should encourage your kids, especially uh, grown ups and people who are growing, especially kids who are in the age group of seven to 16 years. To eat a rainbow of foods means a lot of berries in their diet, a lot of fruits in their diet. Um, for adults, green tea is a good option. For adults, uh, occasional wine is a good option. Okay, Occasional uh, moderate amount of coffee is a good uh, way to improve our digestive illness. Uh, onions, broccoli, all your uh, sulfur rich food like cabbage, uh, dark leafy green vegetables, uh, beans, pulses, millets okay the more you go into the whole form of the food the better it will be for your digestive system okay now certain herbs certain extracts are also very good to increase the digestive wellness and to reduce digestive inflammation something like curcumin an, an extract of a compound found in turmeric so adding curcumin in your diet will be a good option now curcumin should not be taken by somebody who's already on a blood thinning uh, medication. So you want to make some informed decisions about whatever you understand what is good for you. Okay, uh, Ginger is a good idea. Uh, extract of green tea also known as ECGC. So that's uh, EGCG which is a good uh, supplement to add in case you have a digestive inflammation. 
a quercetin is a good idea my favorite uh, wheat grass uh, continues to be a very good when it comes to digestive wellness uh, pineapple and pineapple uh, extract is a good uh, option to add um, adding certain probiotics in your diet which is bioavailable uh, colony forming units something anywhere upwards of 15 to 25 billion cfus would be a good option but that should come once you have removed the toxics and when you have started to repair your gut then you should reintroduce probiotic because you want to rebalance something that has been lost you want to re-add those things into your diet uh, having a good quality of alpha lipoic acid so ala you get it in synthetic and in natural form you should look for a natural form of ala which is very good for your digestive system uh, maintaining a good uh, vitamin d levels which has become an epidemic by not taking higher doses but taking smaller regular doses will help to increase your uh, gut strength will reduce inflammation and improve immunity uh, having good omega fatty acids in your diet okay a balance of epa dha in your diet through flax seeds walnuts uh, almonds would be a good option so you should look at a frequency of adding more of this uh, you should not overdo any of su- any such thing you should have a moderation when you're doing and there are certain uh, herbs that are also being used to improve the digestive wellness something like uh, chia seeds uh, certain things like okra cabbage juice all these will help you if they currently suit your body something might not suit your body you might want to take a in- informed decision of not adding them right now but in general these things help so if you are looking to maintain your immunity if you are looking to in- to to decrease your chronic inflammation focus on your digestive wellness because everything in your body is interconnected so start linking those things and you will see that the model of wellness is there versus and model of disease or illness have a wonderful day everyone and we'll catch up soon namaste